I was saying to Harry that I haven't seen him since I saw the film at the BFI premiere, and I'm quite thrilled because I think I know what Harry was wanted to get across. And, and one of the critics I read said he he thought, oh no, he's going to go see another small C Alzheimer's film. And he wasn't looking forward to it, but he wrote this. He came out of there and said that Supernova is a sublime ode to love. It pays homage to the beauty that quietly lies in the simplicity of a shared routine. McQueen aptly conveys how devastatingly inhumane it is to grieve a living, breathing being. Yeah. He got it. Yeah. Can I ask you, Laurie, when you say that the reviewers got it, what do you mean by it? What was it for you that is important for people to take from it? I can only think of the word it. Harry saw it happen at our house. Instead of finding this out and, and locking yourselves away, a couple locking themselves away, you've been together for so many years, you've got to make every day count. And the person who doesn't have Alzheimer's, the onus is on them mainly because they know we don't have much time. They know that we have to feed people and dress people and you lose people. And the other person is aware that things are happening, but they almost have a calmness. They have a calm pill about them as they don't have to answer the phone or make a doctor's appointment. They just have to be loved. And when Harry met John, John was at the stage where he was like a charming puppy. He loved Harry, and in in the old days, you wouldn't he wouldn't have accepted a hug from Harry, but he loved being hugged by Harry, and he loved cups of tea. He loved to pet dogs. He loved children. So, it is about two people coming from being young to older, and all these plans to now you have to make every day count. The person calling first played it so well in the fact that even though Stanley Tucci knows what's happening, Colin first really carried the load. And many times I did what he did, went into the bathroom, turned on the faucet, had a good cry and came out and said, so what's for dinner? Now, the other person knows very well that the other one's been crying, but they go, I don't know, how about hamburger? You just, what do you think, Harry? What's it? I'm not sure even I know exactly what it is, other than to say that it seems too obvious to say, really. But it's just expressions of love. I mean, that's really all it is. In this instance, it's about a shared experience, a, a really kind of deeply felt and challenging shared experience that two people have when they're trying to not only make sense of what's going on in their lives, but also have maybe some kind of ownership of it. But that shared experience is probably the key to it all. It's about showing both sides of living with something of this nature. And like you said, Laurie, it's very different for the person that is ill, that has the condition, than it is to the person that is the um, other end of it. So I guess the film is trying to kind of explore the marriage of both of those experiences and how you navigate your relationship and as well as your own life in the context of um of, of that happening to you which is you know which is of course what i saw firsthand every time i came around and hung out with you and john you very quickly understand something of how different life suddenly or not suddenly has become for those people and i guess the film is just a my attempt to sort of do that justice really in some way that was great and i think that it's really telling that it's actually very hard to describe what the it is and i suppose that's what's amazing about the film is that it, it's not just in words it's in everything you you see all the interactions it's so much about the visuals as well and it's not necessarily something you can describe or put your finger on but when you see it in action it's something you can feel, I think, as an audience member. And I think that's so, so And powerful. I thought it was interesting. I'm sorry to interrupt that. Harry got it because when Stanley and Colin went to visit their family and 
It was all nonverbal. You saw when they got out of the car, the looks they made to the people they were visiting. You could feel it at the table. There was a just an mm. understanding as if they'd all been to the university that somebody else who hasn't been through this has been through. And I can't explain this, but Harry, I knew you would get it because you lived it with us. And it's not just love. Someone can't say it's about film, just about love. It's not that because many people will be in the same situation and love each other, but one can't take it or one goes, it doesn't work. But if two people get it, John and I don't have children. We've been together for 40 years, so I don't have any family in this country, so I'm by myself. When you're younger, things are never perfect, but all of a sudden, John became, instead of in the early days, he would support me and be my mentor. All of a sudden, I'm his mentor, and I was given the gift of wherever it comes from, of <clears throat> understanding nothing else matters for the next few years except both of us. Now, I didn't, no one told me to do it and I didn't read it in a book. It just, I did that to survive myself because as I said, Stanley has a better situation than Colin, even though Stanley will pass away. Eventually, you know, we don't know how long people with Alzheimer's will live, maybe 10 years, but he'll lose his mind. He'll pass away even though he's alive. And that's what he's afraid of. Where to watch somebody dying every day when Stanley says to Colin, can you notice, am I getting worse? But I just feel so blessed, Emma, to work with people like Seb, yourself, to know that you've chosen a career to work with people like us because we're not disabled. And yet it's the most life-changing thing, as this man says, to watch grief for a living human being that you love and still try to laugh and have Harry over and go for we, we used to bring Harry to the thrift shop and grocery shopping and watch movies. And I didn't sit here and cry all the time, did I, Harry? I just had no, to, I cried inside. We, mm -hmm. we I borrowed a dog, I borrowed a doggy.com for John. And what I used to do was when the dog was with John, I'd go downstairs by our front door, sit on the stairs and I'd cry. I'd cry because I didn't have the strength. If John saw me cry, he thought it was his fault. So I go cry, and do you know, once the dog came all the way downstairs, it isn't my dog, looked at me and put its paw on my leg, and I had to laugh, because the dog knew I was downstairs crying, and then I'd come upstairs and go, so what are we going to have for dinner tonight, just like Colin would do? So, Harry, you, you got it, and I'm so glad that you spent your time, and Emma spends her time, and all the people that why did you make this film to make people aware help others or just why did you why did you decide a subject like that well i mean i think part of it it all came from me because i was you know lucky enough to spend time with people like you and various other people who were going through it and what i learned was that it was just an incredibly important thing to document in some way so there were lots of reasons why i wanted to make it and a lot of them are, are wrapped up in um, a desire to educate maybe and i think definitely artistically express something of the love that i witnessed in everyone that i was lucky enough to spend time with that's going through this kind of extraordinary part of their lives this sort of really literally extraordinary kind of rite of passage that everyone goes through when they're dealing with a diagnosis of dementia whether it be earlier on in life or later on in life you know either way it's life-changing for that person and for the people around them and i think as a filmmaker that's just an incredibly valuable thing to try and make into a film i think so there were i mean i suppose there were lots of reasons why i wanted to make it but i was just so profoundly moved by what i was watching and reading and learning about that it seemed like an important film to try and make. And how did you get those wonderful actors? Well, I mean, to be honest, it was, in the end, it was really easy because they just both bought into the script and the characters and they really thought that it was an important film about important issues. And I think as an actor, that's all you can really ask for in a script in a way. Hopefully, I mean that not as arrogantly as maybe it sounded. But I think you're looking for hopefully brilliant, nuanced characters to play and also a story that 
moves you and they both read the script and were both equally moved by it so it was actually relatively easy in the end to get them on board but uh, doubtless was very lucky to do it they sort of embraced it right from the start until right to the end still now so it's pretty incredible experience really can i ask about in terms of other represent because it, it feels so different to me to other representations of dementia i've seen in the media in film in television and uh, was was that important to you was that part of your thinking in any way i must confess i didn't go out and instantly watch everything that's ever been made about dementia partly because i think you're always trying to make something that's its own thing and you don't really necessarily want to be influenced by other stuff but I'd seen various films over the years the very obvious ones like Still Alice and right. Away From Her which I admired but I think what I didn't want to do which I think perhaps those films do do is that I didn't want it to be a kind of dirge about how horrible and depressing a terminal illness of any nature is because I think that's kind of obvious apart from anything else uh, it is of course it is it's, it's an incredibly difficult thing to go through but there's also an enormous amount of light in it and there's an enormous amount of humour in it. And I really just wanted to make a life affirming film about this kind of terminal illness. I didn't want to make a film that was sentimental in any way, because I, I think that's been done before. And I don't think also that it's, if I can say it, I don't think it's the right way of dealing with this kind of material, because I don't think there's much that's sentimental about it, actually. And the tendency is to dip into that territory, I think, when you're writing or making a film about these things. That's not my experience, meeting people like Laurie and John and several other people, a lot of people that I read about as well. I mean, sentimentality didn't really come into it too much. It was about the strength really of love and the strength of the bond that people have that actually is strengthened by this situation. Makes um, you a different person, doesn't it, Harry? Definitely. I think there's no doubt in my mind that the process of making the film from the first sort of moment that I knew about young onset dementia to now, is, which has obviously involved a lot of spending time with you, Emma, and your team and Seb and you, Laurie, and everyone. You know, it's a life changing experience, definitely. And I think you just hopefully want to make a film that does justice to how life changing and, and in what way that experience is life changing. So I think hopefully it's its own thing and it's an original take on it. And I think that, as I mentioned, the critics picked up on that and I was very glad. Yeah. They were expecting Still Alice, but they got something much different. And they were glad. They appreciated it. They got a different take on it. Well, I mean, I hope so. Also, I think the other thing perhaps that's different with this film to the other films that deal with a terminal illness, let's say, not necessarily just dementia, is that although... You know, it's got big stars in it like Colin and Stanley. They're playing really just normal, regular guys in the film. It's warts and all, really. They're in a slightly idiosyncratic, small camper van bumbling around the north of England. It's They're not living in a Hollywood mansion or a, or anything like that. And I think that's really important to normalise the situation. It's, it speaks to more people than it, it doesn't, if you know what I mean. It's a note to love. It's a, it's about daily life. It's fantastic. It's fantastic, but I can't tell you what it's about. <laughs> oh, John yeah. would be so proud. Thank you. Yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, we we're all involved, have been involved in this enterprise to make the film together because we want people to see it and we want people to learn about dementia and young onset dementia and how one might live with that. And I think that's the trump card of the film and that's the reason the film exists so the real excitement comes when it comes out and people are allowed to you're allowed to share that with the public at large because that's why you guys were generous enough to work with me on it and it's why i spent all those hours in your office irritating you about dementia <laughs> information because that's the result really is to get it out there so can I ask you both, and this might differ between both of you, but what you most hope that people will take from it when they see it? What I'd like the most to take from it is if you get the news that that's going to happen to you when you're in the same situation. Try to be brave and make every day count, make every minute count. I used to do things like um, take John to Le Garret for lunch, and I took him even 
a few months before he died and he'd knock things down because he didn't see right and everything and after he'd knocked on two glasses of wine which I let him drink or all his food the manager came up and announced to the whole restaurant this is John he's our best customer he has PCA dementia he can dump and drop anything he wants and we'll just all pick it up don't worry because everybody started concerned like thinking John was wrong just go out there to hold hands it's a very precious journey and and live every minute try try to live every minute hmm. that's what i'd say just if you're in that situation try to go out for support get support find other people in your situation and um hopefully you'll find wonderful people like emma harry hmm. seb crotch and others and you're not alone yeah you're not hmm. alone you can't relive those days. You can't relive that time with that person. Mm. So grieve later. That's what I'd say. I just completely agree with everything you've said. I mean, it's, I suppose, cherishing the time that you have together, however different it might be day to day than how it's been for you both and the relationship previously, I think is really the crux of it. I really hope that people see the optimism and the value in love and trust when it comes to coming to terms with this kind of situation. That's really, in a, in a general sense, what, what I as a filmmaker hope people take from it, that these situations that we are put in in life can be just as life affirming as they are sad and challenging. I think that's ultimately what we always have to try and remember. And obviously the film also shows how difficult it is to remember that. But the journey itself is part of it. And the journey itself can be life affirming if you see it in the right way. But I also think on a slightly more granular level, I just hope when people watch the film, they'll have at least a better insight into what living with young onset dementia specifically, but dementia broadly speaking, looks like and feels like how it affects people that are sort of orbiting around the person who is living with it directly. And I also hope it's a good representation of the physical as well as the mental manifestations of, of something like, in this instance, PCA dementia, that people learn that dementia is not all about memory and it's not all about old people. I think those are important things to get out there because as we all know very well, it really isn't. And I think that the film has hopefully a big role to play in educating people. There's one point that you've reminded me of, Harry. About six months before, around the time we were working with you, um, John used to come to the doctors with me. And everyone's always concerned about John, or I would only talk about John to my own doctor because John was sitting next to me. I couldn't leave him outside. And um, my doctor said to John, in this in the state he was in, John, what is your concern about this? And John said, I don't feel I can give Lori enough support because I'm not able to do anything. I can't answer the phone or cook or, and I'm concerned because she has to do everything. And my doctor said to John, make no mistake, John, make no mistake. You are very important to Lori. And whenever she looks like she's flagging, you must hold her hand or ask her to sit on the couch and you just sit with her because you are her support. You are the only way she's going to get through this. And he said, I haven't thought of that before. I'll hold her hand. And that's what John used to do. And if I got very sad at home, I would say, John, remember what the doctor said? I don't want you to let anybody call us up or I don't want the TV on. I don't want anyone at the front door. Now he had no control over that. But I said, I want you to take care of me because I'm so fragile and I need help. And he would say, sit on the couch and I'll hold your hand and he did. So we told him that he was the strong one and he did. Yeah. So even though it's all on my shoulders, He's still there, just like Stanley was still there. And Stanley was concerned about Colin. You might, people might think that people with Alzheimer's can't 
can be, be concerned that they can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it does often, as you experienced, Laurie, as you were saying earlier, it does often involve a real reversal of the relationship. The person that had their hand on the tiller, maybe, of the relationship yeah. suddenly doesn't. And I think that's really interesting. And again, hopefully the film is a good expression of how challenging and, of course, also rewarding it can be to have to sort of be the person that's suddenly in control of two people's lives. Because that's certainly, you know, obviously what, what you went through, Laurie. So I think that's that's also an, an interesting part of it because it does often relate to the, the relationships that I've witnessed in, in this context. I mean, I think you both know the story when around that time, Harry was coming to see us. John used to make me a coffee every afternoon and he couldn't he couldn't do that anymore. But um, I, he was sitting on the couch holding my hand and being in charge. And in my head for a minute, I thought, John's gotten better. John's better. He's holding my hand. He's being the strong one. So I said, John, remember when you used to make me a cup of coffee? And he said, yes. And I said, do you think you could make me a coffee? And he said, with pleasure, I'd love to. And he got up and left the room. And I thought, this will be interesting. And he came back into the room a few minutes later. And he said, can you remind me where the kitchen is? We couldn't find the kitchen, never mind the coffee. And we laughed. We laughed because there went my little moment thinking John was cured. And um, that's what your movie's about, isn't it? Um, what you both just said about the relationship, I think, is so important in this film because coming from a research context, we often compartmentalize everything so we study the person with the diagnosis and we study the care and needs and we try to support the person with dementia and we try to support the carer and I think we can sometimes lose what happens in that relationship and the relationship itself is not always a focus but that's what you see obviously in a support group setting you mm. see how central those relationships are so it's just so wonderful to see that represented in a way that will be hopefully accessible to, to so many people. One other thing I, I just wanted to mention is um, when you first spoke about the film, Laurie, you said um, it's like two people coming from, and you said something, Harry, about history and background. And I just think the characters are so rich and so well developed, obviously. You have such a sense of them before the diagnosis and aside from the diagnosis. And I thought that was just really important and I guess it's just really good to see as well because from a research point of view you you see people at the point of a diagnosis but you can see so much of a couple's shared history and interests and things they've been through before shape how they respond to that certain situation so I guess I, I wondered how important that was for you to capture that relationship that had existed before the diagnosis or existed around it. I think it honestly is probably the most important thing in terms of the film being as powerful or as emotionally resonant as I wanted it to be because the film really takes place as you know over a very short period of time a matter of days and in that time a lot changes for the characters but if you don't believe that those characters have their lives invested in this journey and this situation then you're never going to care about them enough and Therefore, the point that you're trying to make with the film, socio-politically, in terms of education, is never going to work. It's going to fall down straight away. It only works if the audience are emotionally engaged with the two characters. So it was probably the most important thing, or almost the most important thing, in the writing process. And really, the only way I was able to do that was because I was luckily afforded the opportunity to spend so much time with people like Laurie and John and in your in your office, uh, Emma, with Seb, because you're creating characters out of nothing. They have to be, you know, original, unique beings, but you draw so much from the emotional architecture, I guess, of the people that you're directly involved with and, and also helps to have good actors. <laughs> That's also true. Harry. There's one moment in the film that was the most poignant, most heart-rendering, gut-wrenching for me. 
it's when Colin opened up to see the book that Stanley would have been writing. And John had a book just like it. And he used to write a journal all the time. And when you looked at it and looked at it, his handwriting changed. And then all of a sudden there was only squiggles and then there was just lines and then there was nothing. I almost, that was unbelievable for me because that's when yeah. it happened at our own house. And it's like the person's lost on paper. They're lost. They can't, John couldn't sign his name yeah. anymore or he'd make a line and think he did or Oh, so wow. thank you for that. You captured Actually, I, something that happened and I wasn't aware that, that that had happened directly to you. So yeah. Wow. It is because if you think about it, especially you know Emma with rare dementia PCA, they think they've written something or they see it as one way, but it isn't there. And to have a journal like that and then see the person writing and then they're changed and then I I thought, my God, how did you go right into our mind? And, uh, amazing, amazing. I think as as well, the benefit of the it being in film is that it's just such a different experience to sort of explain those symptoms to people or to try and educate people about them just by describing them or talking about them. I think to see those things in action and to see the responses that they elicit, it just allows you to access that type of learning in a completely different way. And like you say, if it's with people you're already invested in and you already care about characters, it's really, it's so moving to see those things played out in film. Yeah, I think that's one of the real trump cards of film in general, really. There's a sort of very basic film saying, show, don't tell. And that is really what it's about in this instance. You know, you're focusing the audience on something for a period of time and you're just presenting it and you're allowing the audience then to take whatever meaning that they want or can from what you're showing them. And I think with something like dementia and specifically PCA in this instance that has quite specific fallout for a person, film gives you the opportunity to really allow people to engage with that, whereas like other mediums might not have as much luck with that I don't think but film definitely does definitely um, and I had lots of questions obviously but I feel like even in just what what you've discussed between you you've touched on all of those things in such a rich and really helpful way for other people as well was there anything either of you wanted to add any other reflections or thought to be perfectly honest I, I think it's just important to, to say thanks from my perspective because the work that you guys do, Emma, is, is completely remarkable and it helps people like me that are trying to use it for a certain purpose and people like Laurie, much more importantly, that are going through it firsthand. And I think the more that word can get out about the incredible work that you guys do, the, the better, really. So it's just wanted to say thanks for allowing me to be a small part of the process. Definitely our pleasure. And this has just been such a lovely team situation to be a part of. I think it's really amazing as well to bring together different perspectives on the same kinds of issues. There's always just so much learning. I've just been felt so lucky to be involved. Oh, Laurie, oh, do you want to yeah. add anything else? Yeah. Again, like Harry, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I feel joyous. And that's a crazy thing to say when we've lost John and people are still having this but I feel joyous and it's all because but, of you yeah but just to jump in Laurie uh, about that I do think it's really maybe important to remember that you were saying earlier about being feeling like you're not alone and I think I really hope that one of the experiences that you will have and that other people will have when the film comes out is exactly that it's that there are a lot of people going through you know a similar if not the same situation and there are now a lot of people watching people going through that situation and I think that if that is in any way helpful or strengthening then I think it should be at least I think it's important. So thank you Harry for making the film and thank you Emma I met Harry at one of your events. Well and thank you Laurie as well for all your contributions to that group as well because I know you've obviously you've been a member a support group member but you've also fed so much back into those 
groups and in sharing your experiences. I know via the film, but also even one-to-one -one in those talks that you did with us, it will have made such a huge difference. So thank you both. A huge thank you to you both for all your contributions, for everything you've shared with us today and all your reflections. Just for your brilliant work and for sharing your story, Laurie, and for all your work, Harry. And it's been lovely to talk to you today. And thank you both so much. And you. Thanks, Laurie. You're very, Thanks, very, very welcome.